and welcome to Go Engineers Shape Your World. My name is Adam Hughes, and today we're going to take a look at SolidWorks Composer and Visualize. Now, kind of trekking on here, we're, our theme for this event is going to be this race car that we've modified and, and edited. We've gone through the scanning, we've gone through the 3D printing, we've gone through geometry manipulation, and this is kind of what we've ended up with. So it's been a whole lot of fun working with this car. And I'm just going to show you a little piece of that here for SolidWorks Composer and Visualize. So the current workflow to your process may be something like this. You, know, you sketch something up, you 3D model it, you make sure it fits on your part, and then once you got that down, you'll manufacture it, CNC cut it, or send it out to get to get made. Photographs are usually taken in if it's something you're going to market and sell, and then it goes to marketing and sales, and typically that can take an extremely long time. So what we propose is to add in the functionality of Visualize the Composer early on in the process so you can start the marketing and sales information and all that delivery to the customers while you're generating the prototypes and manufacturing the, the, the components, thus shortening your overall time to production and increasing return on investment and making everybody happier, right? That's the ideal scenario. So here's an example of SolidWorks Composer. Now I have some visuals here. We're going to jump into the software. But I just kind of wanted to give you a heads up. Say, hey, look, you can create this parts list type bomb, right? Where you can create these instructions where you can see arrows telling you how to remove things or how you know how things come apart, really illustrating exactly uh, the steps needed to do this necessary option. In this case, this is simply the shock. So let's go ahead and take a look at SolidWorks Composer. All right, here we are. You notice it looks a lot like uh, Word, right, with the ribbon at the top and, and the different tabs. And here, our goal is to create technical documentation, this rich technical documentation. So it, sometimes it's kind of easy to take a look at the original technical documentation. So here's a parts list for a car. Uh, not a whole lot of pictures. Right? We can probably illustrate some of this stuff faster to our customers so they can find our parts and place that order. So that might be our goal here, just make instructional documents that our customers want to read. Here in this case, we're going to actually look at the disassembly of the shock here. And what you'll notice is that you know all these other steps look okay. One, two, three, four, five. I'm kind of showing how the, how the shock is disassembled. But then step number six isn't quite what we need. And you can see it's not black and white either, so it's not sending us any money on print. So I need to go to SolidWorks Composer and edit my step six. Sweet, let's go ahead and do that. So here I see each of the steps I've created in step six. Oh, yep, it's not quite right. So I need to start removing some stuff from this because it's already been removed in the previous step. So we're going to go ahead and choose not to show those things. Oops, don't want this guy either. And we're getting pretty close. All right, so the next thing I want to do is is a quick linear explode. Now this this is a whole lot of fun. You got to think in SolidWorks we have mates and all kinds of different things. In Composer, these are 3D objects in space, so we can just go ahead and pull them apart as we see fit. Here I'm going to use the Alt key. That's just a little trick. If you if you jump into Composer, the Alt key would allow you to linear explode these things in a common direction. So that direction is going to be the axis. And here, they probably need to go this way. Um, okay, I'll let that slide for now. And then we'll go ahead and move this downward. Again, by using the Alt key. It's just a quick tip for you guys. If if you currently use it. There we go, that looks better. And that's kind of how the the inside of the shot comes apart. Now, I gotta make this cost effective. I gotta be able to print it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the background to white so that you know I don't have to waste my money on, on printing the background. And then the other thing I need to do is I need to change the render capability, the render of this shock. So if we go to our render tab, we can go to mode and then select silhouette. But notice there's a lot of other really great uh, rendering profiles that are here too if you like. So okay, we're getting closer. I like that. 
Now we need to illustrate by which way all these things came apart. So I'm going to grab my arrow. And again, the Alt key is our friend on this one. So I'm going to place an arrow here and then kind of stick it out in space. And you notice it's going the wrong way. That's OK. We can go, is, go ahead and change that here in the properties. Go ahead and say End. And then you notice that the arrow kind of stays over everything. And what we want to do is we want it to, we want it to like, you know, we want to better display that. So let's go ahead and take a look at, and what you notice here is that the arrow is over the top of everything. So what we want to do is we want to uncheck enable stay on top, and that all kind of that way it'll kind of pass through each of the components and really give us a a good look at you know what we need to do with this with the shock here. So now that I've I've gotten everything change the way I want it. You can see step six has not been updated over here in the view. So what we need to do is click the update capture, right? So we're going to update this view. Um, if, I, if I clicked on this one, I create a new view. I could do that if I wanted. But here, I'm just going to update this view. And I'm going to go ahead and save this out as a image. So I'm going to go to my workshop and select my high resolution image. But one really cool thing about this is that we can save some profiles. So here I have an instruction profile, I have a micro profile, and I have a cover. Okay, so if I click on cover, you'll notice that the pixels on the on the save are rather large. I don't think I need anything that big, but if I go to my instruction, you can see that that's probably better suited for the type of picture that I want to create. So we're just going to click Save As. We can go ahead and save this into Step 6 Revised. Yes, sure, why not? And now we're able to use that image in our publisher document. Now you can use all types of documents, publishing documents here. Um, this is just one example. You know, there's there's DesignX and and several other ones that are out there. But at the end of the day, basically all you want to do is be able to replace pictures, edit pictures, embed or link pictures so that you don't have to, um, you know, repeat this process all the time. So when I insert, insert my step six, you can see that. It, kind of follows the flow much much better here and we see you know hey look these are the, this, this, these are the steps to uh, disassemble the shock and then you know when you put it back together function test it move it up and down and hey you have your technical documentation finished sweet so let's go ahead and showcase a lot of the other great features of composer so I have this initial car set up here and one of the really cool fun things I like to do I might not necessarily use it for technical documentation or instructions or anything like that, but it really helps me dive down into uh, the car itself. I like to box everything and then go to my transformation tab. There's this, there's a spherical explode that we can use and the idea here is that we can just take all the components and blow them apart so we can see what's inside of them. Now, like I said, this this isn't probably the, the best uh, the best view to use for customer facing information. So here I'm going to go ahead and capture the view and if I wanted to look at this chassis all I'd have to do is click show and it would automatically fit it to the screen. All I'm doing is choosing to show it but then now I can capture this view as well and say we've enhanced something on this. Then I can go back to my parent view over here in my view tab and select some other components. Hey we've also made some significant changes to the chassis so we can isolate the chassis from that previous view and then again capture a view. Maybe add a note even if we wanted to. So if we go to dictate to the customers that hey maybe you know there's been some some topology change here and uh, you know we, we want to tell them that hey look this is an improved component we can go ahead and select our note and modify change our text and then we can easily change the scale of this and maybe even how we show the customer where it's attached to. I like this arc tip. It's kind of fun. We'll update the view and then now our information is being passed along. Another really great thing is the capability to make that parts list, right? So here we have a shock and we need to dictate to the customer, hey look, this is what each component's named and here's how many of you need per shock set. So we can certainly do that in SolidWorks or in, in Composer, but remember that this is not SolidWorks, so it's not the same bill of materials per se that you would generate in SolidWorks. This is more of a parts list where a bill of materials is like a manufacturing list. But let's just take a look. 
So I'm going to go ahead and generate the uh, the bomb IDs here. All, all you got to do is a single click of a button. And what you're going to want to do is show bomb table here at the bottom. What you can see is all the components with some nice highlighting uh, of what's what. So let's take this one step further. Let's go ahead and select our complete shock here and go ahead and create the callouts. So what we're going to go ahead and do is change how the balloons are displayed. So here we're just going to make sure they go to the left side. And if I wanted to, you know, I could have some up here. And what's really great about this is the magnet line that, that we also see in SolidWorks is available here in uh, Composer. It actually started in Composer first. So all I'm going to do is pick up all of these balloons and I can kind of add another magnet line. So that's really neat. You can really make some awesome parts manuals just dictating, hey, what's what. So I'm going to go ahead and update this view and move on to the last step here. And that's really the update capabilities of Composer. So we're going to take a look at the actual SolidWorks model now. And one thing you notice is that this little cap here has two configurations, coilover and default. So if I go ahead and hide the body and we change the shot cap to a coilover, looks awesome in SolidWorks, but we haven't transferred that information to Composer yet. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, and then dive into Composer, and then choose to update the document. And I'm just updating it with the SolidWorks file, so I'm going to click Update. And after you know a couple seconds here, what we're going to see is the shot cap come in and update my Composer manual. This gives us that reciprocity between SolidWorks and Composer. You could be manipulating and editing your SolidWorks file all the while while I'm creating my technical documentation. And if you happen to make changes or updates or add parts, it's no worry because we can always go back and update the model, update the Composer model with the actual CAD model. And what we see here is the updated shot cap and our instruction manual is now up to date. Awesome. So let's go ahead and dive into this next bucket. We're going to go ahead and look at SolidWorks Visualize. So this image here is the, the Hydra car from Captain America, but it doesn't really exist other than in the movies, right? But we've certainly made a render of this guy. Now, this is something, this is some of the capabilities you'd be able to tap into in the SolidWorks Visualize Professional Package with the advanced lighting, the uh, turntable, and camera motions and sweeps. But before we rendered this, this was a CAD model, right? That's all there was to it. So let's go ahead and trek on. What you need to know is that SolidWorks Visualize Standard actually comes free or included rather with SolidWorks Pro and Premium. So if you're a Pro and Premium customer you already have SolidWorks Visualize. It's just the standard version. If you want to jump up to Professional we also sell that too. We support it. The biggest difference between the two is you see one has a static camera icon on it and the other one has a motion camera icon on it. That's kind of a good summary but really one thing's missing from that bucket. SolidWorks Visualize Professional has a lot of productivity tools in it. So with advanced queuing and network rendering, you can really save yourself a whole lot of time and not have to wait for paint to dry or water to boil, per se. So think of SolidWorks Visualize as the camera for your CAD tool, right? Taking those really awesome pictures to let people know that, hey, this is a real product, but it's also engineered, too. We're not just drawing things in space and crossing our fingers and hoping it works. So my favorite one there was the camera where you can show, hey, there's some CAD information to it, and then here's the the uh, the good look and end result and component. So let's go ahead and take a look at SolidWorks Visualize now. 
and we'll kind of jump into this bucket. So I've already gone ahead and imported the model. One thing I want to show right off the bat, just because I really think it's going to help customers, um, is the import process. So here I have one import process and I've changed the import scheme to import based off color. So what you'll notice here is that anything with the same color is technically the same part. So you see we have a chassis here at the bottom and we have the fender wells. Watch what happens when I change the chassis or maybe the fender well to red. The chassis and the spring and the fender wells all update to red because we imported based off of appearance. Let's go ahead and change that back. Now you notice that adding and changing the colors of things is super easy. We have a huge library of components here. So we can select molded plastic for our black components, drop it off, drop it on our black component, drop it on our chassis components, wait for the render to update, and you can already see we're getting a much better model. Let's go ahead and grab smooth white, throw that on the wheels. And for the last thing we're going to go to rubber and throw dense rubber in on the the wheels themselves. So again keeping the import option in mind here we've imported based off of appearance. Let's see what happens when we import a model just on just based on automatic. One really nice thing with SolidWorks Visualize is that it opens a plethora of products Everything from Rhino to Autodesk, PTC, Katia Pro E, Inventor, SolidWorks. All, time, all kinds of files can be opened up here so that you can create and edit and render. This allows Visualize to monitor the source file, in this case the SolidWorks file, for any updates and changes. And then Visualize will prompt you if there are updates and changes to be made so that you can see those results live in your rendering project. So your renderings won't update per se, but your rendering project will. Here, again, importing off automatic. The previous one was imported off appearance. I find appearance and automatic to be really helpful with SolidWorks files. So start off there and, and take a look at what goes next. So here I'm going to select automatic, click OK, and it's going to import. We have our loading bar on the upper right hand corner. It kind of tells us, hey, here's what's going on. And I should see a whole new tree here, and we're going to compare the two real quick. Awesome, here we go. So after expanding this out, you should see that this tree looks a lot like the tree we had in SolidWorks. And in fact, everything's just about the same. If we look at our initial import, you're going to see that based off color. I didn't have very many colors, 10 or 15 different colors here. So that's all the parts that I got. Again, this can be a huge time saver, but if you really want to change just the, the detail of one little thing, and it happens to be the same color, and it happens to be the same color as something else, then you're kind of stuck because those two colors are married. I'm going to go ahead and hide this model. We're going to jump into just the chassis here. I'm going to get this just right. And what you should be able to see now, so let's go ahead and change the molded plastic and I can do it just at, of the body. I'm going to go ahead and make I'm going to go ahead and make a custom plastic actually. So I'm going to go back to my plastic parts, select oh what do we want to do? Let's do rough plastic. And we're going to drop it on that guy right there, but when I go back into my appearance tab, I'm going to go ahead and find this rough plastic. There's my rough plastic here. We're going to change the color of this to that green that I like so much. There we are. So now we can get a molded plastic green. We're going to kind of trick this chassis out. Now, one little tip and trick is if I select a component, hold the Alt and Shift key, plus a right click drag and drop. I know it's a lot but this is this is the way it's been for a long time. Uh, you can copy your appearance without inundating your tree over there on the right hand side. So let's go ahead and grab that. 
Perfect. Got it all in there. Sweet. Looks fantastic. Okay, let's go ahead and grab our smooth white. Let's go ahead and throw that on our wheels. Now we're going to have to do that for each one. And we'll use that dense rubber again so we don't get this shine. Looks like those are plastic wheels. That could, those would hardly get any traction. Who would want to buy that, right? And that's kind of the idea is you know, you're, you're marketing this. This is your marketing tool. Let's take this to the next step. So now that we got everything colored the way we think we want it, the next step is to place this into a scene. So we also have a library for our scenes, and one of the things that I really wanted to show for both appearances and scenes actually is that we have this local drive and we have this cloud drive. So if you're connected to the internet and you want to go to the cloud to look for a new material, if you click on like say the automotive package, anything with the green check is going to show you stuff that's on your local drive and anything that doesn't have it is something that you can download and add to your local drive so if I wanted to you know grab brake rotor right and place it on my shot cap I could drag and drop it on there and you're gonna see it's gonna start downloading in the upper right hand corner now I don't want to do this this might take a second so I'm gonna cancel it but that's exactly how it would work the same things go for our scenes as well so if we hit the drop down and go ahead and select our environment we can grab all different kinds of scenes and you can see I only have a few that are on my local drive but you can grab them and download them and save them so that you can use them on your next project so here I'm gonna go to my local drive we're just gonna go ahead and use Dazzler I seem to like this one a lot actually you know what let's not let's do change it up a little bit here let's go to gravel pit why not this thing's gonna be an off-road little buggy right so I'm going to grab my gravel pit, and I've chosen to use the lights from my gravel pit right now, but I haven't, I'm not using the picture, and that's because my back plate is on. So I'm going to select my back plate and make it not visible. Now I'll be able to see my environment. Let's go ahead and get this position just right here, and rotate it around. You can probably see that, hey, there's, this is probably a really big car in comparison to the picture. So if you select your gravel pit, one of the things you can do is scale the background image. And I'm just going to say that the image is, let's say, something like 5. And now how does that look in comparison? There, now, now the rocks don't look so so small in comparison to the buggy. So that looks good for now. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our camera. Now the camera is the capture tool that we can use to record all the stuff in our project. So you see I have one camera right now. I can choose to add a new camera. And I'm just going to go ahead and zoom in. And with this one, let's go ahead and move it in over here. And yep, I really like that view. Really showcases the wheels well. So I'm, I'm going to keep that one there. And actually what I could do is I could lock this camera so that it doesn't move. That I'll always get this picture. Same with this original one. So I click lock and it'll lock that camera and they're stuck at where they at. And essentially what you're doing is you're taking your part and you're putting a whole bunch of cameras around it in this pic in this environment and you know when you click the render button all those pic all those cameras are going to flash simultaneously snap your picture and you're going to be delivered these series of images that you can use for your marketing tool so this is this is all of your setup here right all your cameras and all the angles you want to grab you're going to place them in here now the last step here is to click render so you can right click and select your render profile we're gonna go ahead and cancel this and one of the things that we're gonna jump into is our is our render output so I'm gonna go ahead and select my render tool or my render from my tools drop down and here we can tell at what resolution we're gonna save it how many pixels per inch this the print size of this this image 
and then the quality we're looking for plus the, the passes. So the passes, you can see my computer's been actively rendering this whole time. The passes here really control how good your part looks. Uh, here's where you'd also send it to Q, and here's how you're rendering your your image. We have a couple different types of render options, CPU, GPU, and hybrid. Since my computer has just an okay graphics card, hybrid mode is going to be the most functional tool. But GPU is going to be your fastest. So if you are rocking like a Quadro K4000 or 5000 or 6000 or something really awesome, you know, the GPU tool is going to going to save you a whole lot of time. While we're here, let's go ahead and talk about our render options real quick and our display options. You might have noticed that my screen was actually kind of small here. Um, and that's because, you know, again, I'm just running a, a half decent graphics card and this is this is the most I could show without it kind of lagging here and there per se. So here we have three different render options. We have our preview mode, our fast mode, and our accurate mode. The fast mode is what I've been working in this whole time. The accurate mode pushes your GPU to the next level because it is calculating the light trace the whole time. It's a full render and we'll actually see the noise. These little pixelations here is what we call noise. That eventually resolves. I mean there will always be just a little bit of noise here but the more passes you have the less noise you're going to see in your picture. But again this is calculating per pixel. So if we go back to our fast mode, I also want to show you some of the new options they've added. So we have a downscaled option, a steady, and a blended. So the steady option, when we rotate the part, it's still it's going to try to keep the render. It's going to try to keep the part actively rendered the whole time. If we go to blended. It's going to it's going to toggle us into our base or it's going to toggle us into our preview mode so that it doesn't so that as we rotate the part it doesn't impact our computer's resources. The last thing is downscaled which I find works really well. Um, that's just a little bit of chatter so when you rotate there's a little bit of chatter it's trying it's it's keeping everything the way it is but it's not doing a full uh, a full render until you release it and then it starts rendering that back up. couple quick tips here. This is your select tool. So you can select based off appearance or model or part or group. And the last thing here is your spacebar button. Brings you from your simple UI to your traditional user interface. Everything I've done here for manipulating the part is a combination of the alt key plus the center mouse button and the left and right mouse button. So Alt, left mouse, does your rotate. Right mouse, does your zoom in and out. Center mouse is your pan. And if you scroll in and out, it's your perspective. So I'm changing the perspective of my part. Great, I've actually run a couple renders. Let's go ahead and take a look at what these look like. All right, so here's my first render. Here I chose to keep on the body. I added some illumination to the headlights and then put brake lights in it. You can't see the brake lights because they're back in space, but you can see them glowing on the shock. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. Here's just more traditional render. We move the body, added the white. We hit, here we can see the, the matte uh, finished rubber. And this last one is kind of the whole body. There's my brake lights, there's my headlights that are illuminating. And there's the body that we've created with the decals that we added in SOLIDWORKS Visualize. So now the last thing that I that I really wanted to, to talk about here is that these two products, Composer and Visualize, can actually be bundled together really well. And they complement each other because one does awesome pictures and one does technical illustration. But why not have both in one document? So here I've just kind of gone back and edited my um, original publisher file. Or instead of putting a rendered composer image here, what I've done is I've I've added in two images from Visualize to show the customer, hey, look, this is their part, and this is really what it looks like, and here's a really accurate image of the things that 
they want to see. They want to see their part file. They want to see their RC car up here. So might as well give them something that looks awesome, right? So here is an example of two visualize renderings on the front page. Print those in color. And then on the next pages, you can go ahead and save and print in black and white. Or here, you know, dictate how to remove the shock, how to disassemble the shock with SolidWorks Composer. So they really complement each other very well. And if you already have Composer, I would definitely say, you know, jump into Visualize and start using this right off the bat. So let's just wrap this up. We here at Go Engineer are committed to helping you, our customers, with your design challenges, your production challenges. If you're ever in doubt, if there's a tool that we have that may or may not work, give us a call. Let us know. Um, you know, no strings attached. Let's make your work environment better. Let's improve your work environment. This is Adam Hughes uh, with Go Engineer and Shape Your World. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.